Welcome back to Celebrity Radio with me, Alex Belfield. We're live across the world on YouTube, talking to one of my favourite people today, a showbiz legend, a man that people have loved for decades. Roy Chubby Brown will be officially opening the Joe Longthorne Theatre on the North Pier, reopening Blackpool on the 27th at 9pm, when Roy Chubby Brown comes in your living room, and we're delighted to have it. How are you, Roy? I'm fantastic. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. It's so nice to see you again. I mean, we've spoken so many times over the last two decades, and you're still here, and you're still had it and we need a laugh now more than ever don't we well my wife thinks we're having an affair i'm sick of seeing you <laughs> <laughs> i mean i can't wait to get back on stage i've got so much to say it's an interesting time isn't it and i think people have really realized the essence of life which there are many hours in the day who knew because people like you you're so busy have you ever stopped for 13 weeks before no never no. i don't know what to do with myself i'm absolutely bored you know uh, about yeah, I better not say it, but yeah, you know what it's like, and my, my blood's boiling over what's going on at the moment, you know. I mean, Let me talk about you and your life, because you've been in this business since comedy was a boy, and you've been making people laugh across this country, and as much as councils try to stop you, as much as the left-footing media try and disparage you, you've always found an audience, and I think this time is proving that, isn't it? That people won't be told what to think and what makes them laugh, and we've got to be very careful with that. Of course, yeah. I mean, when, when you look back over the years, you know, what people don't know is my history. I was a clean comic for years. Never told a blue joke. Never said bugger bloody nipple tip. Never said anything like that. All I did is uh, I was going to, to, to shows and it was all men, or it was all women. And I was being told, you're funny, mate, but you're going to have to smut your act up a little bit. So that's what happened. I've smutted my act up a bit. And, uh, and then I never, I never looked back. I, I, I went on Opportunity Knox, an audition for Opportunity Knox, and I used a joke, and the punchline was, he's only got one ass. And he said to me, you're dead funny, but you can't say that on television. You've got 20 million people watching this. So, you you know, you've got to learn by your mistakes. That, and that's why I come second on your faces, because I didn't use any, any mucky language or any suggestiveness or... That's what happens. What's interesting about lockdown is you've never been bigger online. People have found your stuff. Um, but it's a place where everybody's screaming and having their opinion. I'm not even sure that's a good thing either, that everybody's able to scream their opinion anonymously. Um, are you glad that that wasn't around in the beginning? You were able to just do your show and leave the stage door and go home, weren't you? I don't think, Alex, I could be who I am if we'd had all this social media in 1968, 69. I don't mean this because nobody would have let me. Right. Uh, uh, you know, you get barred out of towns. You get you get a council. Council say, uh, just for instance, one, I'm barred out of uh, Northampton. I'm barred out of Northampton. You've got a council. You've got 12 people around the table. Four of them love me. They think it's hilarious when they've had a drink and a party around the house and put my video on. But the others, oh, no, we're trying to clean the town up. So do the big one. They always pick on the comic. Mm. <laughs> And, and regarding the, the police, uh, this government's too soft. They really are. The police should remove these people. Uh, the, the, we should have boot camps. Put them in boot camps. Mm. Teach them a lesson. What about all their grandfathers and their fathers who fought for us during the war? What about what? What? what, what does not matter anymore? They, they give the lives for us. Winston Churchill. Oh, how many? They say no, he is slavery. How many people did he save? How many lives did he save by getting rid of Hitler? Mm. I wish people would just put the thinking hat on before they start shouting them out off mm. you know Let's talk about coming back to show business and it will reopen eventually. I don't think there's going to be a harder time for theatres. We've got to be very careful, haven't we, that we don't lose perspective at this time. Theatres make a lot of money and to ask punters who keep them alive during good times can't be expected to save them at bad times whilst millionaires are on their yachts. Well, I agree with you in, in some respect, but you see, I earned, if I earned, like, which I did last year, 50 grand, I'm not allowed to, to claim anything. But now we've been off three months. It cost me at least a thousand pounds a week to live with oil and insurance and gas and petrol and uh, wages and, and everything else. But, and, and my savings are just going, right? Now, if this happens another six months, I'm going to be on my ass, personally. So, uh, you know, because what, what we did is, we, we were so, we were living from, uh, we were living every day as if we were all like uh, superstars. We were buying things, clothes, uh, going to fancy restaurants and all that. So we've had our day, so we can't complain, we've had our day. I, I just feel sorry for, I have seven lads who work for me, 
and I feel sorry for them because I can't, I can't support them anymore. Mm. I can't supply their wages because I don't have it. If I had it, they could have it, but I haven't got it. So you know, but, but when you when you hear people like uh, Richard Branson ask ask for handout, uh, that's it's ridiculous. Well, that was my point with Cameron McIntosh, who sacked his cast of Lemmys and Phantom within a week of COVID, and now they're on their ass. Um, you know, when you've got £1.3 billion in the bank, I think we've got to be very careful punishing those who are on the least amount of money. Well, they're, 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 they're just ridiculous. They haven't thought about what they've said after. They, 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 what they think is we're all blind and deaf and we don't know what's going on. Of course mm. we know what's going on. You can't. We're going live now to Robbie Williams' house in Los Angeles, right? And you go there and you, he's got gold taps, you know. <laughs> he's got a recording studio you would die for. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got no money. So we could take that's going to get back together and do another tour. Yeah, up yours. Yeah. <laughs> Talking of show business, Blackpool is on its arse as well and it's struggled for years and we need it to come back and you are going to be reopening Blackpool at the North Pier which will be renamed the Joe Longthorne Theatre that legendary theatre that's been home to so many stars over the years and Roy Chubby Brown will be live through the internet he's coming in your living room 9pm Saturday 27th this is really a, a grand reopening of Blackpool because we need to get people back to save people's lives I mean they are on their arse from the ice cream van to the chip shops to the theatres to everybody we've got to get people out spending money again or we're all done aren't we uh, this this country's in shit isn't it be honest I mean uh, we're going to go bankrupt aren't we if we don't get back to work you know uh, you sit and you watch the TV and you hear these statistics and they're saying well you know at least a thousand people a year die of flu in this country a thousand people a year die of heart attacks strokes and then uh, this corona thing you know so we've got to live and let live we've got to get out there now before it's too late before we become a third world country before we're all outside in our street with a begging bowl you know let's get let's let's do so we got to, because cleverer people than us what you you doing your job the best you can i'm doing my job the best i can I'm supposed to have clever people out there we know we know everybody's not einstein but do something for us tell us what to do be honest with us let's get back to work let's get back uh, the, let's get the cinemas open. Let's get the, the bowling alleys open and the, the skating rings open. Let's, you know, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We've we've been off now what something like uh, 12, 14 weeks, and we're and most of us have been locked in the house. I haven't been off the step for twelve weeks. Really? You know, only the Tesco's, and that's that, that's the highlight of my week. Tesco's. <laughs> <laughs> Musing over an organic vegetable. This is the new showbiz, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. We just, we just all, we're on like millions of others. How many guitar vocalists and singers and musicians? I, I don't know what they don't know what they're going to do. No. They just sat at home. What we're going to do? And I don't think show business will ever be the same again, will it? I think the days of having five in the press office and 17 outreach workers and all of this have gone. It, it's a wake-up call. And even shows that go out, I think there will be fewer and they'll have to make better choices because the days of putting shows on to tick boxes for 14 people, there's no money for that now. No, we're not all Elton John and Rod Stewart and people like that. We're, we haven't all got uh, uh, money and resources. We, 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 we just live in hand of mouth now. All of us are. But... Uh, don't feel sorry for us because we can always come back and uh, I'll be stacking shelves in Tesco's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Tell me about what we're going to get. Um, I know you're starting this new online thing, which is so smart because it's the way forward. I mean, the days of filling theatres are hard work and expensive. The irony is you can reach more people through Facebook and you've been doing that through lockdown. I mean, that song you did, uh, when, you uh, when You Lose Someone You Love, three million views. I mean, there's no theatre in the world can hold three million people people yeah yeah i've got a, a really good fan base you know and because i do a little bit of something else other than tell blue jokes and do a little bit of piano you know a little uh, it's all there see i can sit here for hours and play and you know sometimes some things come to you and sometimes they don't but this uh, question and answers thing that we're going to do on the 27th is my fans and other people can ring in or, or email us and say They'll ask you the question, or where was your first uh, booking? Who's your favourite comic? What do you do during the day? And just questions like that. And and I'll, I'll have to be as funny as I possibly can with the answers. But I do have a lot of good stories about show business. A lot of good stories. 
I've interviewed you many times over the years and I've begged of you every time to do a show with the piano and you because under the costume is Royston Vasey, who is an incredibly intelligent, talented man, one of the greatest uh, pianists on the circuit, uh, one of the greatest writers too and deliverer of jokes. I mean, it's sad in a, in a way, isn't it, that some people disparage you because of the costume when in fact under that is, is an amazing talent. I do truly believe you're one of our greatest comics ever and one of our most brilliant talents. That's very flattering in that uh, Alex that's very flattering and I do appreciate what you just said but we all admire somebody else uh, I admired Doddy and I thought Doddy was brilliant and Doddy admired uh, uh, Arthur Brasky but I couldn't see anything funny in Arthur Brasky so we all have our opinions that's why we all wear different clothes and we eat different food and we listen to different music we all have our opinions I mean there's some great young comics on this on the on the uh, on the circuit at the moment you only have to watch Mock the Week and uh, uh, the Palladium shows and uh, uh, Labatt's Apollo and you, you, you see some of these blokes and they've got it, they've got it and they, they, they'll come through at the top like, like they used to years ago it'll be good, it'll be good for the, it'll be good for the business mm. you see Will you ever do a show where we can just watch you play the piano? Because, I mean, you're amazing at that and, and drop the costume and, and come out as raw. Because that's, I mean, this is a gift. We want to see you play the piano. Well, I've, I've played twice or three times in my act now. And I've got some new ideas for uh, for doing a uh, sort of... Uh... You know, I've got ideas for that. That's called the clock dance. So I'm going to try and get the audience to go... <laughs> I've always got something there's always something in the air going around and that is amazing I mean at your age again to still be sh schlepping all over the country and doing this act is remarkable I always ask you the same question how are you because you've had some tough times health wise and I suppose Corona has been a worry for you are you great? well yeah I'm, I, I have, I'm like everybody else I have aches and pains you know I had the, just the last few months I've been getting a lot of pain in my back and, and I mean about, I think it's sitting on my ass to be honest yes. with you but <laughs> And it goes, oh, when you, every night you're working and you're on stage for an hour and a half and you're jumping about and going, da 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 you know. And then the next night you're sat in the house going, oh, what's on? Curry, oh, what's that? Oh, Emmerdale, oh, what do you... Yeah, I'm just not... I should be moving. And it's dead easy to get up and walk the fridge in this. Uh, I'm going to put the fridge upstairs. You're not getting fatter, are you, you fat bastard? I mean, come on, you can't do that, Chubbs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I will... Well, but I, this is the first time I've seen you for a while, Alex. I think somebody else has put a bit of weight on us. <laughs> I've, got, I've got some old clothes here you can have. It might be tight on you, but I'll send them down. One of the things I love about your show is the bits that aren't scripted, the bits that you haven't rehearsed, because I love your process of adding in new gags and taking out old ones, but the best moments are simply the ad-libs. Your brain and the speed in which it works is so inspiring. Has that slowed down at all? Because it seems to me on stage you're still as fiery as you were 30 years ago well not at the moment no I'm quite uh, you, you see some other con your eye when you're telling the gag the, 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 it's, that's alright that's ad libs alright if you if you, you pinpoint that way towards what's going on but, but it's coming back and then thinking what was I talking about there yes yeah, 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 <laughs> that's yeah. what ad libs are on when I, I mean I'm, I talk about things like when I was doing the nightclubs and uh I was ad-libbing all the time. There was a big fight in the club one night, and I was shouting, "There's no dancing while I'm on," you know. <laughs> ad -libs, you know. And uh, well, you you've seen you've seen what I do. I'm, my ad-libs, I've got about three thousand in here. You know, yeah. I've, I've always got something to say because you had to, in, when club land in the sixties and seventies, you had to have something to say mm. because I was on stage in Glasgow, nineteen seventy four, when Scotland beat England at Wembley. And guess what? I'm in the middle of Glasgow. Good I mean, how unlucky is that? I walked on. I said, "Good evening, everybody. I'm not the comedian. I'm, uh, I'm I've come for the gold post back." And I had to kick forty pint glasses bounced off my head. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you've got to be prepared for that. You see. Yeah, you mentioned Ken Dodd earlier. I did the last show with him in Blackpool at the Grand Theatre, which was sold out right to the rafters. They were sat on those benches right at the top. And it was the most magical night I'd ever had in a theatre. Just all the stars aligned for some reasons. I think he knew it would be his last time. And it always meant something to him, Blackpool. Blackpool means a lot to you too, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I said this uh, not long ago. I said, uh, if you snap me in half, it would say Blackpool right through the middle of me. Because 
1984, 85, when I first started doing Blackpool, do you know I am the only comic, believe it or not, in history of Blackpool that's done all three uh, piers, the Opera House, the Grand and the ABC wow. and the, the small theatre. So, um, when when uh, there was a big show on at the North Pier and I was on the South Pier and the show on the North Pier was losing money for some reason or other and some of the stars walked, walked away so they had to cancel it. So I got the phone call, will you do the North Pier? I said, I'm, I'm, on, the, I'm on the South now. So I had to do my show half past eight to 20 to 10 South Pier, run along the pier, jump in a car and get to the North Pier and then walk on stage. But the problem was, I was on the stage at the North Pier thinking, have I told this one? <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell one about the policeman? Did I tell the one about did I tell her one? You know, that's what you were doing. Talk to me about Joe Longthorne and his legacy. The voice of Joe was staggering, wasn't it? Well, I first met Joe when I did Hull in 1970. The, the, there was a, a, a big club in Hull called uh, Barkers. It was a, a bakery club. And I got there on a Sunday dinner time. And he was only a young lad, blonde hair. And when I said to the doorman, uh, is the concert secretary here? He said, yeah. I said, it's packed the club. Is it like this every week? He said, no, but our kids on. Now you see, I didn't know at the time that everybody in Hull called Joe our kid. Uh -huh. So yeah, somebody said to me at the bar, uh, oh, you're on with Chubby. I said, I'm on with the doorman's brother. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and when he came on and he sang, uh, he was, well, everybody had, but you could hear a pin drop. Now that when Wetman's clubs, you never got that. You could hear a pin drop, and he was sensational. And we became friends over the years. And I kept going to see him, and he came to see me. He appreciated what I was doing, but I appreciated him a lot more. Mm. He should have been this country's biggest, biggest star. He should have gone to America when he had the chance. He, but he's a family man. He loved his mom and his sister and everybody, his brothers. He was a, a proper a home bird. He liked his fish and chips and his pints. You know, so I mean, if he'd gone to America, he'd have been absolutely massive. He did put me in mind of one of those great Vegas stars. I mean, he'd got that elegance about him. He he knew how to dress, and he'd certainly got the act behind him. Phenomenally talented as an impressionist, but again, under that, a, a really incredible world class voice. He just, he just, he, just, uh, he, he, he could hit top C, top top A, top. He had a fantastic voice. And a, and a very funny man, yeah. a very very funny man. If he'd been a comic, if he'd be, if he'd become a comic, we'd have all had to pack in because he, he was that good. If you ever if you ever see him taking that bloke off on on the uh, the program on afternoon and sells antiques, and he took the guy off. Hey, my face was aching laughing at him. He had him up to a T. He was a great impressionist. You know? Yeah, yeah, remarkable. Great. I wish I'd have been there for the halcyon days of Blackpool. I hear the stories from Pollard and Les Dennis and, of course, Doddy and you. There are so few people who could sell a theatre. And I look at what Barrymore did at the Winter Gardens. That will never come back, will it, where there'll be a no, summer no, season? No, it won't. No, it won't. Even when I was number one in the charts with Alice, when, I, when, me, me, uh, when uh, Universal told me that me, uh, me, me DVD had outsold you two and people like that when I was top of the street to fill to fill the winter gardens you had to be someone very special I mean we always had a few empty seats at the back and uh, and, and that was when I was at the height of my popular uh, when we were doing everything when when I was playing a drum solo and the piano was involved and everything else yeah to, uh, I mean I used to go and see Dawson uh, and all the time uh, Les Dawson and you know to fill the opera house was was uh, was was like fill in the London Palladium. Mm. By the way, I did two nights in 1986 at the London Palladium, sold out 7,000 people. And the next night, I'm on a club. Yeah, <laughs> that's showbiz. What does it feel like to have had a 50 year career and suddenly be sat there talking to some idiot like me and not having a theatre anymore? Is it difficult not having the act and getting in the van to go and do a show? Because you've never known this in your entire life. This is uh, this has destroyed a lot of people, a lot of businesses, a lot of uh, professional people. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm even I've even Alex questioned myself: Can I come back from this? Because you know, when you talk every night for an hour and a half, and then suddenly you're not talking to anybody, and I'm thinking, can I come back from this? You know, I, it's all like writing stuff down, but you have to remember it. 
you know, I, I, I write pages and pages of stuff. But when I get back on the stage, am I going to remember what I've just mm. said? And, and, and of course, we're missing a lot because I'm not on stage and you buy the papers and the stories to talk about. Oh, I'm, I'm, I've got nobody to talk to about it. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I need, and your brain needs to be working. You need, mm. Your brain needs to be oiled. You know? I have to say, I'm very glad Doddy isn't here now. He would not have handled this well at all. Oh, no. Oh, Ken, he wouldn't know. You'd be stood in my garden doing half an hour. <laughs> You'd be shouting through your letterbox. Hey, listen, I... <laughs> It was absolutely fantastic. It was my favourite comic book study. Yeah, mine too. Hey, listen, I love you so much. I'm going to see you as soon as we're back up and running. I mean, what is your take on it? Is there any hope of theatres reopening this year? I don't think there's any business in it, is there? Well, there's that many rumours going around, you know, oh, it's going to open in November, they're going to open this. My first show back was going to be this and going to be that. And then, you know, I, I, the a funny thing is, I did ring a, a theatre in Cardiff and I said that, uh, you know my show there's at the end of July I haven't made it said, oh boy oh you better get yourself down here <laughs> he said, there's no germs going to put us off you get yourself in that car you get yourself in that car. wow my manager said oh don't take any notice of that is there any business in working at 20 or 30 percent I mean these ridiculous grids we keep seeing of two seats three empty seats two empty rows four empty I mean it's preposterous and it doesn't work for comedy does it I mean if there's not that community surely it's it's impossible I have a couple of friends in this business, uh, top comedians. So what they did is they did a show from their front room or the carriage. Yeah. And uh, uh, you can't comedy. You have to you have to face somebody. You have to live off what they're saying. You know, the laughter. It's the laughter that gives you your time. In. Yeah. It's the shot that gives you your time. Yeah. I wish people had stopped doing those Facebook shows. I think it's exposed, especially the cruise comics. I, I think it's it's not gone well for many of them. And the trouble is, this stuff lives on forever. Stop it. Uh, well, I know a top comic who put himself out there and built a little stage in his garage. I think he took 60 quid. Mm, it's laughable. I, and I get the desperation to get back, but I think what Corona has done has exposed the wheat from the chaff and those who are not quite as stable as we thought they were without a stage. And, and again, I think you've always been a family man, haven't you? As much as show business is important, you've got to have a life that's bigger than it. We, my, my father brought me up. Uh, my father was uh, what, what the, his responsibilities were. I'm a working man. If I wasn't who I am today, I'd probably be sweeping roads. I'd probably stack shelves. I'd probably be down Dorman's ICI. I'd be like, you know, I'd, I'd be working because that's what you do. You're the, when you're the man of the house, you bring the weight home. Yeah. I mean, women work harder than us any road. They do the washing, the cooking, the cleaning, the shopping, and everything. They work out of the nose, but we don't tell them that. <laughs> we don't tell them that. We're the one who we are the brains. Just remember that. <laughs> Do you know what's interesting, though, about this whole thing? I think that's what people have found so difficult. We've got no purpose, we've got no income, and no way of saving our families, and it's very frustrating. Exactly, exactly. Let's just, let's just all get back to work, Alex. Let's just get back to work. Joe Longthorne Theatre opens at the North Pier by Roy Chubby Brown. He's coming in your living room at 9pm on Saturday 27th. You can watch an exclusive face-to-face -face chat. Go and watch uh, When You Lose Someone You Love, a beautiful song by a hugely talented man I've loved and admired my entire life. Roy Chubby Brown is an amazing act, but Royston Vasey is the man behind him and the genius too. Roy, thank you so much for your time. Alex, any time, mate, and I will leave you some old clothes, I promise. <laughs>